if you had a passion for putting on an event, uh, playing, DJing, mm. learning music, mm. or MCing, whatever you want to do, now is a perfect time because the big boys, yeah, the big boys are on their ass. A lot yeah. of them, like, so you're now about to see, literally, a burst of new promoters, new ideas, and everything vent- changes. Yeah. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London, essentials you need to be, want to be, should be, or could be at this time of the year. Sharon is caring. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. And of course, if you haven't checked out the Kellervision app, you know what we're doing here. My brother, Liam Monaghan, inside yeah, the house. How are you? I'm well, I'm good. I'm, I'm, thanks for fitting me in as well, your podcast. You're turning stuff out so quick at the moment. I'm just like, when I got the message through, David's like, yeah, do you want, he, he might be interested. I'm like, how's he going to fit me in? I mean, I, I'm a no one as well. And looking at you, you, know, you go, oh, names. I've really, enjoy, I've really enjoyed it. Oh, so, yeah, blessed. thank you. Bro. Hey, listen, for those of you who don't know about the Liam, man, like, wow, versatility in across drum and bass roots, reggae, sound system, bass culture. That's it. Podcast, 19 years podcast. <laughs> Steven even hear him say that on my podcast. I'm like, my guy, come on. <laughs> it's a long time. Now, I've been doing my podcast. My podcast is Reggae Roots and Bass. And um, I started at university. And uh, yeah, because I'm from, I'm from sort of in between Nottingham and Derby. And it was like, it's all villages, like, a bit like Emmerdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, shout out, mum. Yeah. And um, <laughs> there's not a lot going on. So when I went to university, I got the opportunity to start uh, student radio. And uh, I was like, it leads to very house and techno and stuff. So I was like, I'm going to. I'm going to. Gate and all that. Exactly. Yeah. And I was just like, well, let's do something different. And it just rocketed. And yeah, this is next year will be the 10th, the 10 years of it. And that's, that's insane. That's insane. What are you going to do for your tenure? I mean, I, I, this crosses my mind. My, my, my wildest dreams. Oh, okay, this is what I'm going to do. It's going to be like bells and whistles, you know. Like the, 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 the grandiose moment, you know, at the end of Star Wars. Or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, how long have you been doing yours? Uh, three and a half years. It's a st- but like you'll appreciate it. And most podcasters and radio presenters and that kind of like, even at three and a half years, you do go through that period of like... Does anyone still care? Does people mm. listen? Do, am I doing the right movements? Because technology, like from mm. when, from the point in which I started doing my little radio show, where no one knew who I was, and I was just got, I've just, I'd gone from like having no opportunities with music because mm. there was just nothing where I lived to all this equipment and studios. Mm. You kind of like, how do you diversify? And like we were talking just briefly before we come on about things like TikTok and mm. how technology just you can't keep up with it as yeah. well, but. Mate, your podcast is sick. Oh, <laughs> so. my God. <guy. laughs> I'm coming on yours. I'm coming you on yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of FM. Yeah, hold tight. Yeah, yeah. Definitely going for it. Yeah. Bro, like, when I think about the kind of the, the trail of destruction that you're leading with doing doing DJ gigs, first and foremost, mm. that, that the bread and butter stuff, through to doing podcasts, radio shows, booking nights, mm. you know, connecting with the artists. Doing, I mean, you know, this your DNA in the whole grand scheme of things, it it really does lean to a, 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 a scene operator. I like that. Hey! <laughs> I like that. That's going on LinkedIn tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> scene operator. Scene um, operator. It's, it's, it's cool. I think it's like for me, and I have no problem even talking about it, is the fact that I, I had a mental brick wall. And I, so I moved to London about three years ago now. Yeah. And I was like, because the opportunities down here you know what it's like mm. the media and people meeting like yourself and that. like it wasn't possible if I was still living up north yeah. um, it's not impossible but it's a lot harder and I guess um, you're kind of staggering yourself by about six months of that's pop, exactly it yeah you're right so and then obviously you've got to move to London's expensive so then you've kind of got to get, get the day job's got to move and all that so then obviously your your podcasting your passion and like this it takes a hit yeah. and um, it's just been really cool to kind of meet new people and network and it is a bit of a slog but it does pay off and now it's like to be honest with you after three years it only just now starting to reap them mm. them sort of rewards of going to meet people putting yourself in them situations and even mm. like this now like this is phenomenal for me this is to sit with you is likewise phenomenal. brother likewise so yeah, it's wicked. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that's it's amazing now it's a very it's a long game it is a it's long a long game. game and it's um one where because th- this is what a lot of people are just going to be dumbfounded with uh, of course, we've already established that to be closer to the to where the action is is the is the key. Mm. But um, a lot of people 
you know, life happens, shit happens. Mm. And they'll be watching this thinking, oh, like, so what? My guy just came around to the podcast. Hold on a minute. So what? He, how did he get into the right places at the right time? How did that happen? How did you, how did you, how did Synergy allow for you to drop yourself into, mm. out of town, into city? I have the majority of answers, but, <laughs> but each story is different. And I think it's really important because people, to a lot of people, it's like, yo, how did he ever do that? How do you do that? How do you, how do you do it? For me, like, in terms of, in the DJing side, like, if I would probably, not now, maybe a little bit more advanced, but in terms of at the time and for years, I'm just a bar DJ. And mm. it was kind of like many millions of people, whether you're in Newcastle, Liverpool, Cornwall, whatever, right? Yeah. And it's kind of like, for me, because of my sort of specialism, if you will, was, was reggae, mm. I just identified that who are the people that are not, you know, you look at sort of fabric and out, they're not really going to be that interested. So it was just a matter of pinpointing who who was doing bits, who shared the same passion. And like for me, a, a, a Rompers Reggae Shack uh, approached me whilst I was in Leeds at uni and they were doing lots of events and stuff. So having spoken to James, um, he opened many, many doors for me because he said, well, you know, c- come down to, to Hackney, I do this thing and play. And I made sure that night and from then onwards, I got every single phone number I could possibly get. Mm. And then from there, you, you move on. And Navi and Boomer, for example, are perfect example. Hold tight, Navi. Boomer, yeah, hold tight, legends Boomer. Legends are even you know, responsible for this. Like, yeah. them guys were just there. And then it's like, you get their number. And look, it's, everybody, it's quite a cliche because people say like, oh, you just need to knock on every door. And, and you, know, you don't, just be clever, be smart. Like, yeah. just literally pinpoint who, if you're a hip hop DJ and you want to get more gigs in London, identify what's going on. Like, don't just go to Ministry of Sound. Like, look at the grassroots and then grow, just set down. Just, vocally kind of sell yourself as like this is what I'm doing uh-huh. this is what I'm involved with and this is my passion because you'll see it like people who want to come play it out of the box stuff they'll be like this is, it's not just high is my mix because that, that bores me it's like yeah. this one about this is the equipment I've made it's been wicked and it's like cool and I'll put you on a lineup and I'll help you uh-huh. that's the way that I've kind of manoeuvred it and then in terms of the events it was just do the day job, yeah. raise that funds and then eventually work with people like Hootin' Annie uh-huh. and great venues who are willing to empower people and that's what it's about man yeah it is and that's uh, some really valid bits of techers in there for, for, for those of you who are listening deep enough when you say grassroots these people and and I, I'd certainly put Navigator and David Boomer in with that that, that uh, elite group of people that not only are on their game they're nine to fivers they work you know mm. they're industrious and they work but they're also open minded and they're, they're also a giving group of people that will embrace somebody that with the right energy and the right attitude you're in yeah but you like you say you've got to have a uh, a mission brief if you don't have something that it's it's not it's not a special brief but knowing Mm. what you want to do and what you want to achieve and Mm. be sure of it that's Mm. that's really the ticket right you don't need a massive you don't need a massive cv you don't need to be like i'm making music i've played this i've played that like don't get me wrong like every single press kit in the world like you've got one i've got one it's kind of i've done this and it's all your sort of top achievements Mm -hmm. for things but there's probably a lot of people watching this who are could be in their mid 30s and like i've missed the boat you haven't you haven't you yeah. genuinely haven't. Like, people that are coming in, especially playing reggae dancers and that, mm. there's people that I love, like people like um, Sue Hahn. Like, Sue's like 60, and she's playing in Ibiza. And she didn't even start doing this till she was in her mid 50s. And, like, she's, she's absolutely smashing it. And mm. the, please, you know, if you're watching this, like, don't. Don't feel the wonder boat is passed. Yeah. Just be, just think smart. And there is opportunities. Go to um, open deck nights. Mm. Go and do this. You know, like you're an artist yourself. Like when you when you start out, like obviously we're in different realms of kind of music and stuff. Mm. But you do go to open mic nights. You do try them things. You know, a lot of artists, that, um, especially MCs that I've spoken to, that, which I found was really interesting, is like, yeah, you would assume they sit in their bedroom all the time writing bars. They actually go to comedy nights. Did they? They go and do like 50, they'll go and try and get like anything from like three minutes to 50, it's just in pubs and they'll just try yeah. stand up and they build that kind of little mic thing. Oh, that know? is so fucking cool. Because, because <laughs> like, if it goes tits up yeah, when yeah. you're MCing, you've got the, you can Bands. bring it round, yeah. you know, it's really, it's a really unique skill. Mm. So just little things, man, it's just, just, just throw yourself out there. I can totally relate to that. There's, um, with beatboxing, there is a one man band um, vibe to it. 
and uh, if you're a comedian, you're literally on your ones. Yeah. So I, I do relate with that. When you said that, I was like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, I'm normally the fullback when the DJ breaks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great, get the beatbox guy on, quick. <laughs> yeah. you know? At least the Oggy 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 style, you'd be right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally cool response. Was it Cliff Richard, tennis? What, I can't remember what year that was, you know, like freestyle. <laughs> no, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And I think also, I think this COVID is obviously it sucked. It sucked for everybody. It sucked yeah. for artists and Independence in the industry. My biggest advice is if you've had a passion for putting on an event, uh, playing, DJing, mm. learning music, mm. or MCing, whatever you want to do, now is the perfect time because the big boys, yeah, the big boys are on their ass. A lot yeah. of them, like, so you're now about to see literally a burst of new promoters, new ideas, and everything changed. Yeah. The higher fees have gone from a thousand pound to 150. Like, this is the perfect time. If you've got that disposable cash, you've got five mm. mates who are interested, you will find the right venues in your city to do something. Yeah. If it goes belly up, we've all done it. We've all played to no one. We've all DJed on top of kitchen sinks in student flat. We've done, we've done it. We've done it. Like, go and have fun with it. Is my That's so thing. sick. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, Liam is my new, new friend. The, the, the operator is talking. So, the you know. operator is talking. But when did it all begin? Like, as, as, as a you, when did you, you know, when, when did this passion begin? I, was, I grew up with um, skinheads, mods and punks. And my mum was uh, and a, a partner at the time, Andy, was really into, um, like, scooters. Lambrettas, Vespers, mods, and that was kind of start. I was really young, really, really young, and we were going on loads of scooter rallies, which I recommend everyone go to every weekend, like Camper Sands, Margate, whatever. Big meetups, yeah. and this fashion, this clothes, you've got punk, psychobilly, you know, it's, it's brilliant. Sick, all sick. night Northern Soul dancers and all that, it's brilliant. Oh, fucking yeah, great. so good. It still goes on, and they're massive, right? So, all type <sighs> VFM as well, because they put all this on. And for me, growing up, I was like, even around, so I was exposed to all this music, so probably around like eight upwards, it was the the, the Trojan records that was getting played. So, like uh, Desmond Decker, the Ethiopians, and all that kind of stuff. And I thought that was really cool. And then sick. what I noticed is the more that I got down that rabbit hole, I was like, when you look at the gigs and you sit on YouTube, it's like obviously people like David Rodigan and stuff. I was like, there's actually, there's actually not, a, there's not a lot of this. Mm. There's actually not a lot of people doing this. Like, yeah. And then you start looking at like radio play, and he's like, well, you have got Rodigan show on Radio One. You got obviously you got like Russ Kwame and that, but everything's at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It's a bit dead. Yeah, and it's the same like you I'll know, type Russ Kwame as well. Yeah, big up Russ, okay. uh, Shawnee, and all yeah. everybody that's representing yeah. it. But even now, like three years on. There's still very little. Yeah, it doesn't change no. entirely. No. Mate, I've been banging on. I came. I moved to London to to do that to try and work into radio and be mm. that next kind of like go to for reggae. Mm. And I haven't seen any slots. People have come and gone, and Mister Jam's gone to Capital and all these kind of things. But there's still very little. Mm. And it doesn't. It, it, it like mate. Like it's like Fort Knox. Like whether you're trying to get into the BBC, Apple, or whatever. Mm. There is still that little bit of that. Mm, reggae kind of like yeah it's a box tick we've got it you can't say we don't do it yeah but it's not going to be the forefront of what we're going to promote on this station reggae for me i feel like that and classical music are the the dna of all music mm -hmm. it's the bass it's the string quartets it's uh, you know everything else okay maybe maybe jazz maybe mm. But these are like the, the 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 buck stops at these bad boys. Like, hey. it, you, I mean, I was just as I was just talking, I was thinking to myself, "Well, I think reggae's got it bad, jazz has got it really bad." But yeah. it's just incredible to think that they're not hey. being represented. It's, I mean, if you if you take it back, I mean, like you know, the history of sort of the rough history because you can go on all day. Is like you know, you had in Jamaica, you would have like mento music, you had mm -hmm. Naya Bingi and all the sort of really old school. When they, even when the Spanish owned Jamaica and they, they thought that there was the Spanish was there, they thought there was gold, and the Brits turned up, and then they realized is actually there's nothing here so they give it to the Brits and then it fell into the Brits' hand and then when the army bases came over there was an influx of like transistor radios mm. and then when the Brits the war and all that kind of it all moved off there was an abundance of all these radios and that and these radios could pick up Miami so they were all these Jamaicans all of a sudden were listening to like Bo Diddley and Little Richard and, that. and even if you look at the first pictures of like the whalers mm. the brill cream Suits, zoot little suits. Richard, basically, they're, they're yeah, on it, yeah, and it's like blues, and then like you had like Mentor, you had, uh, Rocksteady, Scar, and the progression of it, and then like like Daddy Uroy, who unfortunately passed recently, legend yeah. MC, legend. Ooh. But without him, Jay Z, mm. 
Yeah. Any of them, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have had that From same direction. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's mad, and it, it's, it's crazy how it can be the route. Yeah. And you can even go further, but we haven't got all day. But yeah, yeah, yeah man, it's, it's mad. We were just saying before we jumped in, that, um, here's a Pandora's box. Hip-hop and reggae share a very similar thing. Mm. To, to the untrained or somebody that's just getting in it for the yeah. first time, that's just like... <laughs> Yeah, it's mad. It's like, yeah, literally, you can, you, it's one of these things where you sit there and then you'll be on YouTube and you'll be like, oh, Smith, Smith and Wesson. They, hang on a minute, I, I, that's a sample. I, I go through samples. I'm sitting there listening to hip hop. I'm like, actually, I'm pretty sure that was uh, this record and that mm. looked a bit of a nerd like that. Mm. And then, to be honest, for my, the hip hop that I like is kind of like uh, Big Daddy Kane and that kind of mm. stuff, more of the, I suppose, the older school. But again, you listen to that Smith and Wesson and you listen to that old school stuff and it's all there's so much crossover mm. even the samples like Bam Bam Sis and Nancy and that like it's, that's one of the most sampled records yeah. ever but that's appeared in so much hip hop Cypress Hill yeah it's mad um, and that's the era that I too I, I didn't grow up in with hip hop but it's the area it's the area of it's the, it was that generation that I appreciate the most because you were able to discover reggae songs because mm. of a sample that was made on a particular track mm. you then go into that that world, um, I feel like, and I'm sure you agree with me, there's something missing in the um, reference points, the historical reference points, now that, now that sampling's gone, mm -hmm. or pretty much gone. If mm -hmm. it, you, know, you can't even put a tune on Facebook that's your own. Yeah, like, I know. Someone else's fight. sample. You've got to yeah. fight to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I think that, like... As, as producers, I mean, there, it, it, it does really piss me off. Oh. Like, you know, it's like, if it, I don't really listen to much chart music. Uh, I'm not against it, but like, when I do hear, especially, it's, it's yeah. worse in house, mate. It's worse in house. I really like house. I'll play house. Mm. I love tech house. I love green velvet, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. I love all types of music, but there's nothing worse than hearing a tune pop and it's on your radio when you're driving or you're in the back of a taxi and it's like, all they've done is they've taken a tune, a hip hop tune, vocal, mm. that might have come out 30 years mm. ago, put a standard 124 beat underneath it, mm. released it, and you know they're getting bank for bank. it. Yeah. And it's like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How? How has that even been allowed? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I feel yeah, you. It's, mad. it's like, what? How can that be allowed? Um, I'm with you. I, I'm, I'm of the, f uh, I'm of the mind state that, uh, integrity is everything mm. and pop music for what for the broad you know saying that even is is generalizing a lot of things some of the most stuff some of the stuff that we love will yeah. probably be per perceived as that but um it's, it's it's music with integrity and balls that's really what it is but that's that's i think it's difficult a large part of if you really want to sort of go down the route of kind of looking at where people have been done over because of integrity and respect and copyright. And yeah. I mean, look at Jamaica. Um, oh. Like, there's no PRS, Beres Ammon, Barrington Levy, you know, Sizzler, yeah. you know, Trinity, Unity, all these things, yeah. right? For, for 30, 40, 50, 60 years, there is no protection. They have been fucking raped. R that is, a, that is a, you know, it's not a great word, but it's, a, a, it's a, that... The island has been drained, yeah, and the people. So now, you know, when people come to me and they're like, "Oh, we want to put a reggae thing together, we got a festival together," and I'm like, "Cool, what's your budget?" And they say, "Oh, thirty grand." I'm like, "What? For, what for the headliner? No, for the whole thing." I'm like, mm. "Mate, you ain't booking berries and for, for for fifty, sixty. Like these people know their worth now, mm. and these people, you know, it's not fair. You know, it, it's really not. It's just, it's just not fair. You don't understand yeah. how much like the work effort." And then how much they've been ripped off as well. Yeah. Like, Sister Nancy didn't even know that it was like, Bam Bam was even a, a, a solid thing until she moved to America and was like, hang on a minute. Where, what? Where's, where's my bank? And like, the biggest one was uh, King Jammy and Scientist. And this is really niche. Um, you had King Tubby, who was the hero. Mm -hmm, then you mm -hmm. had Scientist and, and Prince Jammy used to work with him as the understudies, right? And basically, King Tubby was, was murdered and it was a tragedy. And then these two are geniuses, King Jammy and Scientist, right? And then basically, it's... I don't know, you, you play Grand Theft Auto, right? Yeah. Everyone's played Grand Theft yeah, Auto. Yeah. Uh, KJR West, yeah, the big, the best reggae station, better than most reggae stations in the world. It's just a fake reggae radio station on, <laughs> on Grand Theft Auto, right? It's the world we're in now, uh, yeah, all this right? Is it. <laughs> and the album on the reggae radio station was just scientists, I think it was Scientists Meets Vampires. It was one of the scientists' dub albums. Yeah. Was that Michael Prophet, like, you are an own good, you are an own good. All, these, all the big tunes, yeah. And everybody used to like rinse it when we were kids and like, oh, the reggae stage is sick. <laughs> and then basically, 
it turns out that scientist was in Jamaica and his, his, I think it was his nephew or his cousin was just like, in London was like, I can't believe you got your music on Grand Theft Auto. And he's like, what's what? that? <laughs> he's like, Grand Theft Auto. And you're like, oh, we're on about. I did some digging. So obviously that game sold like hundreds of millions of copies, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. From what I believe, um, from when I've interviewed scientists, this is not just like, this is from the doors of the mouth, like, mm-hmm. um, it was Jammy sold the rights. And it's, it, they've been back and forward in like a Champions League for like semi final between countries going to different courts. And he's been fighting to get these rights. So he just sort of, that was sold underneath him. They hate each other, bruv. And like, so ima- imagine how much money. <laughs> he didn't even know. He didn't even know that this beautiful, amazing dub album mm-hmm. had been completely. Well, they've been to France, like one one in France, another court in Switzerland, one and whatever. Like, it's mad. They're back and forth in trying to so claim, he, claim ownership. In, in territory by territory? Yeah, because obviously in different. Countries are different laws. Yeah. So, like, the law might lean one way on copyright in this country, but then not in this country. And it's mad. I believe it's all been resolved now. But, yeah, it's an interesting case. If you've got, like, half an hour or you're into just music stuff in general, just Google it and look at the look at the, the time lapse of what happened. It's crazy. Just the, just the nerve. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's exactly it. Exactly, that's exactly it. And especially these are the days where you didn't have Ableton. Yeah. You now, we're talking, like, 50s and 60s. Like... Yeah. Man's putting a pan, sellotaping pans to ceilings and stuff to try and work out the acoustics of hitting something and and getting reverbs. Like, that's the level in shacks that you're at. You know what I mean? God, I love that shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's free to talk about. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. (laughs) But yeah, so you can, I mean, I've just rubbed it on, but that's just one of a million stories where that's happened to to Mm. within reggae. Mm. And, um, And that's why, like, that's why it annoys me when you get the new dance hall or bashment, if you will, because someone make a rhythm, you get 15 artists jump on it, and it's like, ah, there's like a different rhythm coming out every day. Mm. Whereas like, for me, when I, if, I, if I do a dance hall set, yeah. I love old school 80s, Steely and Cleavy, really like, mm. you know, like Slang Tang mm. and mm. Bam Bam and like Playground Rhythm and yeah. Man, and I like the rhythms. The, the stuff that you can drop in anywhere and it just goes off. Mate, you can play it in revs on a Saturday night or you can play, you can get away playing it at a jazz festival. It's going to go off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, cool Uncle, as shit. Or whatever. Yeah, Love it's, it. yeah, it's amazing, man. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, in the same context, we're talking about the legalities how does that sit for you from a, a sampling point of view? Because, you know, there's a like George Clinton's of the world. The P-Funk mm. was, like, sampled, in, particularly in the 90s of hip-hop, a lot. And they, some of them, you know, some of the artists of that era that were getting sampled, they're saying, well, actually, it created a relevance to, you know, we didn't always know what was going on, but all of a sudden we were getting young kids coming to our gigs. And, you know, I don't know, maybe there's an offset. Maybe there has been some pros and cons. Who knows? There's, I think there's people, there's definitely legends um, out there that you would assume are doing well and have done well off the back of their records. Mm. But actually, when you speak to them, and this is one thing, I can only talk about it from sort of my experience dealing with mainly reggae artists mm. as well, um, and even sort of old dubstep heads, it's kind of like, well, actually, we'd be... All right, a good example is in within drum and bass. Um, there's a lot of, like, of the older guys who probably aren't getting the gigs they should or the money, and then... Mm. Someone like Blade Runner will come along, who's mm. very popular with Kings of Rollers, signed to Hospitality, mm-hmm. who's probably one of the best, probably the best drum and bass engineer and mm-hmm. bootlegger mm-hmm. and remixer. You you actually need him to remix your tune, to reintroduce you. So actually, you're I've come uh, like what is life? I've gone from doing Blue Note and I'm now I'm getting thousand pound a gig to like one fifty. Like, but he comes along and redoes your tune and re-releases it, even as a free download. Yeah. Your fees has gone back to nine hundred pound, and you're booked to do everything. That's insane. You know, so, so sometimes it's really interesting that a lot of you kind of do want people to do a good job, mm. but you know, bootlegs. There's, there's many incidents where people have done refixes and stuff, and mm. they probably shouldn't have done. But the artist is a bit like, well, actually, there is a lot younger faces. Yeah. More, you know, my gigs are getting bigger. The, the, the promoters that are getting in touch aren't my old mates from who are in the forties. They're actually twenty-one-year-olds. Mm. Like, you know, you need that to kind of stay relevant. And just going back to what you were saying before, that really is what the—that's the order of the day at the moment. Everything's set, reset, and yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I've only started producing music in in January because. I just mentally told myself I couldn't do it, and I did. And it was amazing to look at drum and bass and using some... I listened to, like, Calibre and Break and mm. listened to put a lot of reggae samples in and um, that were OK to use, not one yeah. of them. And, um, yeah, like, first tune got signed to Go Shed. I've got um, 
I don't know when this is going out, but BBC Radio One, got, uh, BBC Radio London, sorry, got a hundred percent productions mix going out, and this is like three months' work, and it's again, it's just kind of like identifying good samples, mm. but it's the, the these samples and these little bits I'm taking, like, they're not rehashed a thousand times. It's not yeah. Bob Marley's to the rescue. I know what you mean. a million times. Yeah, you know, and if it's someone that I know, I'll ask them permission. Like, do you mind if I use this little clip of you? Like, yeah. you know, it's that kind of stuff, man. It's just polite mm. and like you say there's the creativity levels at the moment is it, go for it crazy go for it the, um, there's a dj called um uh, ak i think it's on this i sent this big thing out to try and get some feedback on the tune i think it's ak 2000 ak 1 2000 he's based in america he's like the go-to drum bass guy and he sent me some really interesting feedback rather than just go yeah sounds sick he was like do you know what make an eight minute tune i was like oh, right he went, nah. he's like genuinely like if you enjoy it and to be different at the moment, either think of album tracks or go and make an eight minute to 12 minute tune and have the balls to go and do it. So I tried and it's really hard, but it's it's really interesting. He said, if you can put together something between eight and 12 minutes, because there's yeah. no law, like just radio predicts that we all it says that, you know, three minutes, yeah, four yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Go and make a 12 minute track. Mm. Mm. See how you get on, mm. and and keep it all original, keep it all moving, yeah. and keep it different. I think that's, that's mad. You know what? That that that's interesting because I was speaking to a mate of mine the other day, producer, whole type James Russian all day, and he was getting into the subject of uh, conformity and what pop music is. You know, spending a lot of time in those uh, higher echelons of managements and labels and people that mm -hmm. want these sorts of things. And, you know, just. Throwing peanuts at you know at the elephants, mm. you know it's just money for foul rope in a lot of cases, and <clears throat> trying to embrace a new way of thinking. We were talking about Bohemian Rhapsody, you know, yep. which is like I don't know, I think seven minutes or something like that. Yep. The thought of like radio ever putting on something like that now, but actually, maybe mm. it is the case that you can do that. Mate, BBC Radio Six will not have a problem playing that record. And that's why I think, you know, you look at their radar, radar figures, like Radio 6, they're not afraid to... Uh. Do, we, I, if I'm driving in my car, I, 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 like, I would love to listen to... Be, I would love to listen to, you know, an hour of um, Gene Simmons mm. playing fucking Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> fucking, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You know what I mean? But it's the whole just, album. Yeah, Done. in full. <laughs> like, no stops, nothing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's just, yeah, I think we're just, oh, everything's a bit too rigid and that is the one thing that I've learned yeah. probably over the last couple of months and, like, you know, I'm not talking from a, a like, a I've realised this and had a bit mm. of just, yeah, like, be random and be a bit weird because you don't really know what, what mm. will work like push the boundaries do it do a seven minute if you've got an ep do you know fair enough make two tracks at three or four minutes but try if you yeah. can get to eight minutes and keep it fresh fair and yeah. you've got the resource in there like ableton logic and all these things and Everything. samples splice yeah. there's no reason so this goes back to what i was saying earlier on at the minute there's a big reset if you've always wanted to produce music and you did what i did and just told yourself like there's no point i haven't got the time can't rah, rah, rah. do that yeah, you can. Mate, you yeah. can. You can. You genuinely can. Yeah. If Go you want to be, the, like you say, the promoter, if you don't think the, the podcaster, the DJ, the... I mean, this is a really inspiring conversation because sometimes I think to myself, I ain't got time, fuck, I got time. You're in the same boat as me. Yeah, yeah. You are literally, I mean, we've got 35 minutes on the clock here, I ain't going to lie. You know, mm. you, you know, we, I just finished doing this thing over here and then you came at the right time and just like crossing chips and it's like, mm. we just managed to make it happen within mm. a space of time. You're, you're, you're constantly busy. Mm. Like, what... How do you partition, how do you discipline? How do you do these things? How do you make the, people are going to want to know. Uh, yeah, how's that happen? It's just, it's like you, like you, you do this podcast and like even this setup here is so impressive that the studios that people don't, that people will pay for an, over, you know, a ton an hour to rent and this is far more impressive. Like you, you have to find that, that balance. Like for me, like I have a, I, again, I have a massive problem mentally with money. It's always a problem that like, not in terms of spending, it's just like a panic constantly about money it's like i need to be earning this money i need to be and i've i'm working on that and yeah. you know it's like i've always i've come to london i'm only earning 22 grand a year working on a bar and, and it's not good enough and i have this big block and it's just like no like actually i work 40 hours a week how many hours are in a week no on my day off i'm gonna do six hours of radio podcasting uh. I'm going to just set myself, I'm going to turn my phone, phone is the biggest one, just turn your phone off, <laughs> just turn your phone off. Three hours, I'm just going to sit there and hunt new tunes. Yeah. And that's it, I'm going to do an hour of just emailing my press back out. That's cool as fuck, bro. 
just level it out. And yeah. it's like, and do you know what? Like, you think, oh, do you know what? There's probably better things I've got to do today than sit there and email promoters for an hour and not get any... You're not going to get the gig unless you do it. Yeah. So just do it. Like, we've all been there. Like, again, like you with this podcast, my podcast, mm. you probably get to the point where you think, I can't really be asked to do this anymore, you know? Like, mm. what's it actually getting me? Is it making me any money? Do I need to get sponsors? Like, mm. everybody, you can go on TikTok now and do a stupid dance and become a millionaire overnight. And I've been doing this for night. You can drive yourself to mm. do that. Like, yeah. mate, like, there's plenty of time to do it. Just turn mm. your phone off for a few hours and literally write a plan. It's not difficult. And you'll be amazed at what you can do in like four hours. See, I know I'm going to be editing this later. <laughs> Look into my eyes, Kels. <laughs> yeah. um, interesting. Uh, just cycling back around the um, emotional uh, attachment you got to yeah. the, the money. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that self-diagnosed as in like, okay, that's an issue? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I, I basically, uh, you know, it's kind of like from university and living in my overdrafts and then through previous mm. uh, relationships and, and things like that where I've been like I need to be able to I never want to get back in that point where you know I'm living you know I'm treating a minus thousand in my in my account as like I've got a thousand pounds I need to get out of that and then as I got older and dug myself finished university and dug myself out of that hole um it really did negatively install this thing in my head and I it's something that I've only sort of realized through talks with my friends and I've mm. identified with myself and current partner and stuff that actually it's, it's not good and you know I should be pretty happy with you know what I have so stop busting my balls trying to do two or three jobs and work freelance and do that and do that and just work the normal job and find the money to sorry find the time to get that DJ gig or you know take a get, jump on the tube and go to a, a rooftop bar and say like can speak to your manager do you, mm. if you've got any DJ gigs mm. like it, it it's just balance so yeah Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I don't mind talking about that. I think there's some real, reality stuff. Yeah, there was a time when I was like a couple of grand in my overdraft thinking that that was my money. That ain't your money. No, it's not. And uh, the, the reward is coming out of that situation. I think what I think what we forget is life is like currency, it has ebbs and flows. And when I think about, you can think about the money you made ages ago or you can think about the money you don't have Mm. last month it it's it's all one and the same isn't it and you just got to approach things on a daily that helps you get to the journey through the journey and to a destination you know each mm. kind of flag point you just got to make sure that am i there i'm in one piece i'm okay yeah i've got cash in the bank okay cool mm. that's kind of like the mo new 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 cottage industry business model isn't it yeah i, th I think you know for me just you know making sure that you're stable is pretty much it's all to do with prioritizing and mm -hmm. it's like you know like i love doing my radio shows and i love doing gigs and i love trying to find gigs and i love trying to make music and you try and fit everything in mm -hmm. but you know it's kind of like right i need this job to get me through this this is going to pay the bills i need to i'm never going to get anywhere with music because loads of people can dj you've just had a year of everyone sat in their house buying controllers yeah. there's so many new djs now which is amazing yeah. but they're actually now in the same pond as you, getting mm. your gigs, and they're probably a bit, what I've noticed, especially in drum and bass, they're a lot younger than you. I mean, I'm 28, but these 18-year-olds who've been banging, like, Twitch and all this, who are now actually supporting, like, Andy C in Birmingham, and I'm sat here like... Whoa, yeah. <sighs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm be, I've been sloppy. I've drum been, and bass I'm is been, a beast of a... Like, people sleep on that culture. I'm like, bro, like... Nah, it, it's, it's, it's huge. Like, we, huge. We, like we've, we've out the box and, and, and my brand and, and we, you know, we're putting good stuff together and we try and get uh, good gender quality on the lineups, mm -hmm. equal opportunity, and people go mad for it, like, especially with the drum and bass stuff. Yeah. The one thing that is annoying, and I have said this, and this, I know this is slightly off topic, is the fact that we've just had a year of everybody buying controllers and coming online and smashing out a lot of, um, you know, getting like, you know, 5,000 Facebook likes and uh, Instagram likes and this kind of stuff. But what the one thing that really I really hate at the moment is people who, I have to word this correctly because I don't want it to be construed the wrong way. Like, it's amazing that someone's got the confidence to, to learn how to DJ and go online and, and do a post mm. and that's really good. But what I don't like is these vulture agents at the minute who and I suppose like I love speaking to all brand new wicked new drum and bass artists because obviously I put on shows and I love to give people mm -hmm. uh, male female whatever like opportunities and it's like yeah speak to my agent what yeah speak to my agent and it's like well, you've got an agent mm -hmm. yeah, yeah 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 and it's like well you don't you don't even started your account six months ago Mm. it's like yeah I know and I genuinely had one agent turn around to me the other day and say yeah well 
you know, she's got over thirty five thousand followers. I mean, yeah, cool. Is that gonna is that gonna transpire mm. into tickets? Because a lot of times it doesn't. Gonna sell thirty five thousand tickets? Yeah. No. So the like. It's just there's a vultures in that little drum and bass. I love it. I think the drum and bass thing at the moment is massive. I think people aren't. I don't think people are sleeping on it. I think people don't realise how big it is. Mm. But like just artists and DJs and people coming through, like be wary, because the amount of people who sent me DMs and been like, is this is this is this legit? I'm like, no, they're trying to mug you off. Like there's a lot of that at the moment. It's really bad to see. Really. I just wish people would be a bit more wise to. People trying to take advantage of people, especially young people. I think you articulated that very well, but I think we all know exactly where you're coming from. Yeah, and just try not to be rude. I don't want to like say anything that's kind of going to piss people off. And you know, if you got the confidence in the last year to again buy a camera, put yourself online DJing and mixing, and especially with drum and bass because that's done really. That's, this has predominantly been the thing, and you're now getting bookings off the mm. back of it. Fair play to you. Mm. Well done. And people that haven't, and the people that are moaning about that, it's because you didn't. Mm. But the little vultures that are coming through, going, yeah, like I'll sign you and I'll get you gigs and all this, and like I'll take like twenty five percent of your hundred pound mm. fee. Mm. And it's like, well, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, doesn't yeah. make any sense. So yeah, just did, did cut just the middleman. If anyone start, if anyone's starting, right, cut the fucking middleman out mm. asap because you've got enough, you've got enough synergy, enough energy going your way. You don't need it. People that do that thing early, like you say, people mm. that not inexperienced, but people that are just starting out, mm. um, it's a lot to be be patient. Mm. There's a lot more to come, and mm. if you if you get on with the wrong people, then it just becomes oh bullshit. mate, like as I said, I, I've I've been mixing since I was like 15, not to a level where I. Because again, I didn't have that opportunity. I never, I didn't have decks till I was at university. But I've played at scooter rallies, played on CDs, mm. and done that kind of stuff. I didn't have the controllers and the things you do mm-hmm. now because I just didn't. And it's like, you know, don't get to twenty years old or twenty one years old, and you do really well online, and think that you have to have an agent. And my next move is to get a manager and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Like I've offered to help people out and make sure that they're they're not being mugged off. I'm not mm. trying to manage them. And um, that's, you know, there has been times where that's been beneficial to that artist because mm-hmm. they're coming through and someone's been like, you know, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you five gigs and I'll guarantee this. And then when you look a bit deeper, they actually own all five brands. So mm-hmm. they're just getting the cheaper artist. Mm-hmm. It's a bit mad and these young people are being ripped off and it's not fair. So, yeah. yeah. Don't, rip, don't mug yourself off, people. Know your worth is what I'm saying. Know you know, worth. it's not about it's not always about the followers. Um, it's just a hustle, and the fact that you've put yourself online and you're hustling, mm. you're putting stuff out there. Keep on that path. I didn't. I, I played fabric. I had opportunities to play fabric just before COVID, and obviously that would have made me about twenty, nearly twenty seven, and I that's a that was a dream. But mm. like, it took nine or eight years to do it. Which uh, I, I I went to the. 25th anniversary aerosol show with oh, I think sick. I think Frosty was there with Brian G. Oh sick! Yeah, uh, were you playing there? No, I did. Um, I did the SW4 after party on Carnival weekend. Nice. So there was like Ooh. it was sick. I yeah. think it was it was mad. I can't remember who was there now. In, in our room, it was Rompers Reggae show. So hey, look everyone who's involved with that. Hold Sat, tight, hold and all them guys. Um, yeah, I was there for that night. But then I also ended up doing. I ended up get. I got like a, a last minute phone call. The first time I played Fabric was actually the main stage in the main room, and it literally the night before I got a phone call going, "Can you play hip hop?" And I was like. No, I'm not, I'm not very good at playing. I'm not a scratcher. I'm not one of these guys, you know? And he were like, if I send you a bit of a list of things to play, I'm going to be late. I won't say the DJ it was, but he's like, I'm going to be a bit late. Do you mind? And I was like, I'll play Fabric. Of course I'll play Fabric. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I ain't got hip hop in me. <laughs> and he was like, what type of hip hop do you listen to? I'm like, Big Daddy Kane and mm-hmm. that kind of... And he was like, cool. These kids will have no idea who them people are. You need to be playing like Drake, mm. Kendrick Lamar. And again, they're not really things that I listen to. Anyway, I went to the gig. And I was like, oh, what was that like? What was that feeling? I was like, ah, uh, scary. Because yeah. it's, like, it's not my, it's not my bag. It's like me saying to you, like, oh, cool, I'm gonna book you for a beatboxing gig. But by the way, you can't beatbox. Uh, you're gonna have to play these five records of like classical music, and mm. it, just, it just throws you off kilter. And it's just like, this is not what. It feels yeah. a bit. You got a um, what's like diverse? Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and. Um, Anyway, I got to the gig, I did it. I'm in fabric in the main room, and I'm like, this is great. Doors open. It was a freshers gig as well, so it's packed. Oh, that's fun. It's like 2,000 kids or whatever fabric is rammed, right? Yeah. And I noticed people were just coming into my room and just walking straight back out. 
and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm, pl- <laughs> I'm playing, I'm stood there on the main stage because obviously not in the little booth, I'm there. You can see me, and if it goes wrong, it's going to go wrong. I'm like, people keep coming in and coming out, and I'm like playing like Jay Cot, I'm playing all this stuff, <laughs> and I don't get it, man. And the thing is, I don't know if it's that good because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I had to go back to the roots. I was like, right. Where's my vibes card? So, so I went through my dance hall. <laughs> tell, please tell I me waited. it started filling out. Did it fill up? Mate, it was packed. All the oh, security and fabric, you know what they're like, but they were all like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was like dropping like oh, Adonia oh. and going through Beanie Man. I was like, nah, this people, man, it's a vibe. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the first experience of playing fabric. And it was, oh, it was, it was phenomenal. It That's was, uh, fantastic. Yeah. So that was the first time. That was the first time. But to get to that point, yeah. like genuinely, like me in a little village, in the middle of nowhere outside Nottingham, like would never have dreamed of doing that. And then I f- a further on from that, I ended up playing, I got gifted um, doing a, the baby box in Ministry of Sound on my own all night long. I was playing house and techno and that. And again, these things just, again, like they just come when you're down, you're like when you're really defeated and you get that one phone call, it can change your world. Bro, so. oh, right, that's another really important factor. Just, you can almost feel the, um, a change of tide, you, the, the likes of us, mm. artists, people that are working at the, on the front line of the things that we want to do and we're challenged by, um, there's a resistance. that I, I, can, I never know whether it comes from my head or whether it's generally out there in the, in the lawlessness of music and entertainment, mm. but you're pushing against the buffers and just when you think you've run out of energy to push anymore... Mm. Something happens. And then you're like... Oh, that was all right. It's almost like a, a tunnel Mate, squeezes you through. It can change, but and the thing is, when you when you, I think with artists especially, like because it's such a mental game, mm. it's a lot of motivation, a lot of self motivation. Get up and go, and you go through so many battles as somebody, you know, like you go up and down, and you've mm. got your brands, and you've got your podcasts, you've got your shows, you've got your video, whatever you do, you go through such the the, the motions are so intense. Like depression is always literally like it's not far away because mm. you just the self doubt creeps in, mm. the money creeps in. It's like we were. I was sat there yesterday speaking to my partner. I was like, I'm kind of missing the boat with all these kind of, even just like the rooftop gigs and the bar gigs and just playing some easy music because I love doing it. And I'm kind of missing the boat with it because I'm just, I'm so focused on trying to sort my own uh, job situation out that I'm going to miss this boat and everything's now opening. And then she was like, yeah, it's fine, chill out. And then I got a text message about half past nine last night from the geezers at the calls Mm. in North London, which Mm. is massive. And they were like, do you want to come play for a couple hours tomorrow? And literally it felt like, it actually felt like a physical lift. I love that. I and love like, that. And you can never, you can never, you know, it's such an addictive feeling because yeah. you're like, <sighs> it's endorphins. It yeah, is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's second. You can yeah. feel it wash over you yeah. and you're just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure you've had it more, definitely more times than me with, with your with your stature as an artist. But it's like that gig comes, it's like, oh yeah, we can get you on at like Glastonbury. And you're like, Pfft. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Johnny, like, what? But, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's the addictive. It's what keeps you going. Yeah, it keeps yeah, us yeah. going. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, even you coming in here and us sitting down, first thing it was like, you're like, well, we should do some gigs and stuff. Yeah, For yeah, me, yeah. it's like, yeah, that's sick because I had not, I, I didn't even factor that in when you were coming in. The fact that I'd been thinking about it at the top of the week and then you're like, yeah, man, it's fucking, you know, it's like, yeah, let's get on with it. That's the thing, you've got to be productive, and that's the thing. And it's like, what runs, it's all right networking with people. Mm. Like I was saying before, like, f- identify who's on your, who's on your mm. sort of wavelength. Mm. But don't just go and say, hello, this is what I do, and here's my mix. Like, that's what I was saying. Like, like with you, we've never met before. Mm. I know you, I know of you, I've known of you for Likewise, years. Likewise, yeah. But then I'm like, well, why don't I just send you a beat? Mm-hmm. Why don't you just come and play on my thing in Brixton next month? Yeah. Why? Because like, why? then down the line, and ne- even next year, we might not talk for nine months, but the phone might ring. You might be going, actually, there's a thing which you'd be perfect for. Yeah, and it's them moments there that can literally change your whole life. If you're in a bad spot, and I've been there many a time, that one phone call that comes out of the blue, I'm, someone I've not spoken mm-hmm. to in years, but I networked with, possibly, mm-hmm. might be like, oh, I've got this opportunity. It can literally save your head. <laughs> and, th- and this, this <laughs> my, my friends, is, is key. You know, it, By the way, Liam, you are... Uh, for me and a lot of other people, big shout out to Jumping Jack Frost as well. Mm-hmm. I know he does podcasts and whatnot. There's a bunch of people doing this thing. Doing the thing. You, you're kind of like the prototype. Do you know what I mean? Like you have these um, octopus arms of all different things going on. Mm-hmm. Those plates ain't coming off those sticks. And you, like, you've <laughs> no, got to go. They nearly do. <laughs> they do. They always nearly do. <laughs> um, uh, I think a lot of people will take away from what you've just said there um, and the conversation as a whole because um, even if you're like up there, you know, 
I the highest of ivory towers doing your thing. Um, things can get a little bit quiet up there, and mm. uh, yeah, and silent. And sometimes, particularly producers, can become very introvert. You know what I mean? The, the, the ADHD on on a uh, on a producer and a beat maker slash DJ mm. is quite it's, it's up there because they they want they want everything OCD actually I think it's more OCD. yeah probably, probably but I think it's a bit of both because you've still got to have that kind of like you know mm. I've got to be you know pounding kind of it's you know quite lonely. Do you know what I've got to say this because this is what just popped into my head as well like big up toddler T as well he's he's just started a campaign mm. right songwriters. Mm-hmm. Song proper pr- proper day. proper songwriters, right? He, like until Toddler posed his thing the other day about this campaign that I think he's either started or is a part of, right? Mm-hmm. These songwriters, proper songwriters, will go to the studio, they'll work all day long, right? They'll listen to a beat and they'll listen to it on repeat, repeat for repeat, nine yeah. hours a day, and they're trying to write something, right? So if you, like if I put a tune out and it gets signed and it's on PRS and ever like I could get like a percentage, the artist might get a percentage. You know? mm. Songwriters don't get anything or or, or like until the very end, mm. right? And the thing is, they're not getting their train covered. You know, they're not getting. It's it's like they only make money when it comes to that point at, at the very end. It would seem, you know, like yeah. you, know, you know when you like a record deal signed and it's mm. like you know this gets eighty percent and blah blah blah. It just seems like you know, and you have to forgive me on the vagueness of it because it's just something I did casually read the other day that Toddler mm. put out, and mm. it's like that's really upsetting, man. So like you say, a lot of the big boys at the moment, I feel, not not necessarily labels, but. Again, with the the, the 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 pressures of having to get gigs at the moment, mm. festivals don't have the money. Like big promoters don't have the money. They've had to come down, and there's now a lot more fish, little fish beneath them mm. in that pond. Mm. And it's like, <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> maybe maybe I do have to divert. Maybe my fee has to come down. Maybe my yeah. agent is taking too much. Yeah, and yeah. it's a big it's a big one, man. Humbling. Very much so. It's a reality check. Mm. Um, and to be fair, like a lot of a lot of people have probably played it right and said, like, yep, yeah, cool. Well, the fee's got to come down. Mm. Um, and, and you know, this has got to happen. But there's a lot of people um that definitely haven't. Mm. And there's also people taking still taking advantage of the situation as well, you know? Mm. So like things like pay to play in that. Like in this day oh, and age, man, yeah, like come on. like <laughs> come on, like oh, we've got a gig, you know, there's a couple of agencies and DJ schools I do know that do this and it's like oh we've got room to fabric and it's like wicked so you know if you're one of our students you can come and play and it's like oh amazing and it's like cool so if you want to play 10 to 11 it's 40 quid if you want the 1am slot till 2am slot it's like 500 quid so you're gonna you have to pay a shitload of money don't do it because there'll be some mug out there that will do it and and that resets everything don't do it everything a headache don't do it yeah. Don't do it. Like it's mad. Like again, it goes back to again what we said earlier. Like just know your worth. Like yeah. if you're watching this and you're, you know, a single mum, you're in your, you're a geezer in your forties and you're a bricklayer, you're a scaffolder. If you could be whatever you are, whatever you are, where you're from or whatever, right? If you want to like literally go into music and stuff, just cut all the cheesy bullshit out and all mm. the speeches about you could be whatever you want to be. Just get on Facebook or go on Instagram. Find a brand or a night that you like, and just message them. And be mm. like, Have you got any openings? Yeah, yeah. It can be as simple as that, and your career as a DJ or as a whatever can literally start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It's easy, man. Start somewhere, or get nowhere, but don't pay mm. to get in. Yeah, no, no, don't do pay to play. Anyone who's doing that nowadays, like that, that's ridiculous. Mm. Like you know, check out. There's, there's so many like just like you would get an open mic night. There's more and more, and it's a wicked thing as well. Actually, open deck nights, and I, I will shout out like um, Bricks and Jam do it on a Wednesday. Yeah. Um, there's um, Rompers Reggae Shack do the one in Hackney Wick. Like there's so many things you can just go and take some. Even if you never DJ before, just take your vinyl or take your USB stick or whatever, and you get 30 minutes and just just learn, never play. No one's gonna come to you like, yeah. oh shit, you know, no. No one's gonna do like that. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people. Or even if you've done the live stream stuff for over the period of the last six months to a year, you still got to do it to an audience. It don't work any other way. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Live, and that's you know? the thing. And that's why, when I, again, going back to what I was saying about the agents, it's kind of like, well, you know, it's good that you have some a, a younger artist who's come on the scene in the last year who's mm. definitely put the effort in, mm. has, has got that interest in someone wanting to book mm. them. But like, at the same time, you've still got to be able to do that. Like I'd find, I'd find it personally very scary, coming out of sort of nowhere and everything's going really well, but then being told, uh, by the way, you're supporting Andy C in Brixton. <laughs> yeah, like, and he's yeah. booked for 150 quid. Yeah. I'm like, what? what? Okay, hold on, yeah. <laughs> what? 
this was <laughs> this is what I worked my yeah. my dreams on. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a bit it's a bit mad out there at the moment for that. But mm-hmm. yeah, just just do it. Yeah. Genuinely, it's the right time. Like it's the right time for new people, parties, and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I think the sentiment on this particular podcast is certainly one of be wary because in the years and years and decades of of music, there are things out there. And in this new age of everything flipped on its head, whether you're in the UK or the rest of the world, you can be whatever you want to be yeah. now. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. You've just got to play the game right. Honestly, like, if you want to work within the music industry or you want to get into music, like, I'm not musical at all. I can't even play triangle. Like, it's, <laughs> it's for me, I'm not there. But it just by, you know, YouTube is your best friend. If you want to look at production, look at YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you want to look at singing or comedy or whatever, go to an open mic night. Like, you, you can do it. Like, it, it really is that simple. I'm not musical. Mm-hmm. I would never... I would never say, like, you know, I went to study music tech at Leeds for five years and all that. Like, I didn't at all. I I ran pubs, Mm -hmm. and that's what I did, and that's what I do. And it's just like, you can do it in spare time, so go for it. Because in six months' time, you'll be like, shit, I've got, like, all these residences. I'm earning. I'm actually earning Mm -hmm. probably enough money to do this properly. It's mad how quick it happens You need, like, four bar residences in London, and you're earning more than most of the people that are working 40 hours a week. Yeah, go back to, you know, go back to the essence. Go back to, okay, buy numbers. Get the gigs in that pay off a level of your rent or the whole of your rent, and then all of a sudden the stabilisers are off a little bit and you can move into different directions and you've got more time to do the things Absolutely, yeah, 100%. It's been a pleasure, Liam. Oh, I know mate, you're busy. You day and just go on and go on. <laughs> it's good, isn't even, it? <laughs> even touch hip hop, yeah. Like, yeah oh. no. Hey, this is a part one. We'll call it yeah, part, part one. one. And we've also got your radio show. We'll get this yeah. out before then. So yeah, yeah, so Sort of FM. Um, it'll be the last Thursday of, what is it now, April, May. So, yeah, I think it'll be May. April, is it last Thursday in May. You're going to come on my Sort of show and we can yeah. get into this uh, even more. That'd be fantastic, my brother. Thank yeah. you. And a pleasure to meet cool. you, Liam. You too. You want to get inside the house? Thank yeah, you man. For me on. Fucking that face let me ramble. <laughs> <laughs> you do a fine job. Thank Honestly, you. insightful. Um, to the point, the message is clear. Get involved and be part of it. Be a part of the scene. We're back open in the wild, huh? Get in. <laughs> Killer Keller Podcast out. In was out of fashion. You stay lucky, people, all right? Nice one, Liam. Big up, bro. Peace. Nice. Yeah. Sick. Sick, sick, sick. Oh, man.